Yes, sir. We're live from the Manship Building's patio, getting you ready for LSU football season opener against McNeese State. We'll talk to legendary LSU baseball coach Skip Bertman, discuss the upcoming LSU quarterback battle, and preview the 2015 college football season. It's the first Tiger TV game day show of the semester, and it starts right now. Tiger TV game day show live from the Manship Journalism Building patio. We're ready for the 2015 LSU football season. My name is Johnny Lombardi. Alongside me, Taylor Curette and the Raging Cajun Mitch Rabelais. Guys, college football is back. It's back it was man. back on Thursday. We had some SEC action. North and South Carolina facing off against each other. We had Georgia this morning. We've got Arkansas going on right now. Guys, college football is back. We've got the music, the smells, the sounds. I'm excited, personally. This is the best time of the year. It's like Christmas. More importantly, it's exactly. <laughs> more importantly, it's back in Baton Rouge. You can yeah. smell the boudin. You can hear a little boozy <laughs> blasting. I can't wait to get in uh, Tiger Stadium, man. Well, it's a new season, and with that, you know, same old expectations for LSU. The fans want results. You know, experts across the country saying that this LSU team could potentially be a Final Four contender. Absolutely. And some experts also saying that this could be the team in the SEC West that ends up going 7-5. and five. Last year, the Tigers finished with an 8-5 and five record after their 31-28 loss to Notre Dame in the Music City Bowl. LSU had big wins against Florida and Ole Miss, but crushing defeats against Mississippi State, Auburn, Arkansas, and once again to the Alabama Crimson Tide. Although the Tigers are coming off a season that was frankly not acceptable to this fan base or team, Coach Les Miles and the players are optimistic on how they'll look different this season. We worked hard this summer, that's all I know. And uh, hard, work, hard work beats talent, so uh, we shall see. You're definitely going to see a lot of energy. You're definitely going to see a lot of swagger out there. Um, we're definitely going to be flying around the ball, um, just playing as a whole and holding each other accountable, like I was telling my man right here. Um, you know, our, our standard is high. You know, we have to feed off the... Now the team does look different, guys, but how realistic are these expectations for LSU, and how does this team look different than from last year? They look different last year, more, more importantly because they have experience. Mm -hmm. I think they now have a veteran offensive line that, that's ready to go. I mean, you know, they have, don't even talk about DBU, the, the <laughs> backfield. The team is, is they're, they're confident. They have a coach that trusts in them and keeps them calm. I think expectations at LSU are always high so that you know they're used to it yeah. absolutely you come to LSU to compete for SEC and national championships so these guys know the expectations we saw them at spring practice we saw them at fall practice they're loose they're ready to go these guys are a lot more relaxed than we've seen they know they're good they know they're gonna be good they can handle these expectations now all the talk during this offseason surrounded the LSU quarterback position and the decision that Les Miles had to make is he going to choose senior Anthony Jennings or sophomore Brandon Harris. Well, Coach Miles made his decision. It's going to be sophomore Brandon Harris that will get the start tonight for the Tigers, ending a long quarterback controversy. Now, even though Harris is getting the start, Miles expects both quarterbacks to still play tonight, especially against McNeese State. LSU teammates are ready to see what Brandon Harris can provide on the field for LSU. I just know he's improved drastically from last season. Um, you know, him and Anthony both took took strides in the right direction. Um, you know, he has been getting a lot of one reps and he's been making the most of it, you know, making, making great throws, making right decisions and checks. Everybody knows that for LSU to have success on the field in 2015, it's gonna start with the quarterback play. LSU has so much talent around the quarterback position that they just need competent quarterback play. Maybe not for the quarterbacks to win every game for them, but certainly not for the quarterback to lose games for them like we saw last season. Absolutely. Coach Miles made the right decision in giving the ball to Brandon Harris. First off, he's got the talent to throw the long ball. He's been working with George Whitfield, yeah. quarterback guru, all summer. He can move the ball down the field and run the team, and that's what you need. You need a quarterback like they had in 2011 with Jared Lee and George Jefferson that can keep the team moving, get them down the field, and not lose the game. And I think absolutely Brandon Harris was the right call. Anthony Jennings will get some snaps, but I think as time progresses, we will see a lot more Brandon Harris, and he will establish himself as one of the SEC's elite quarterbacks. Wow, that's a prediction from Mitch but I think I think coach did make the right decision and I think saying that Anthony Jennings will see time is just a way to sort of cover himself yeah in case Brandon Harris doesn't play but Brandon Harris it's his time and LSU they need a game manager 
someone that will not turn the ball over, hand the ball to number seven, watch him do his thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, now, earlier this week on Monday, LSU had a little bit of a health scare surrounding LSU head coach Les Miles. Now, before its weekly lunch with Les press conference on Monday, uh, coach went to the hospital with migraine symptoms. Joe Oliva came to the podium and told everyone that everything was okay, but Coach Miles ended up self-diagnosing his hospital visit to too much coffee. Huh. I can tell you that uh, I... Uh, I did, in fact, have too much coffee to drink today, and uh, I uh, certainly did not uh, feel real great about that. And uh, I had a uh, very quality medical staff that decided that I should uh, go get uh, some, uh, some examination. Now, hopefully Coach Miles didn't have any coffee this morning, but yeah. we're obviously <laughs> glad that Coach is okay. And on another serious health scare, LSU offensive coordinator Cam Cameron announced earlier this week, about, about a week ago on Friday, that he was diagnosed with prostate cancer and underwent successful treatment. But, guys, two health scares right before the season for LSU football. How does a team deal with that, Mitch, going into the first game of the year? I think what it does is it brings the guys together. It shows, A, coach is human, A, things can happen to coach, but the players need to get behind coach and unite, and I think you'll see the offense unite behind Cam Cameron. I think you'll see the whole team come together behind Les. You know, he talked about it in his press conference. The players are asking, coach, how are you doing? So I think it's an element that brings this team closer together, and I think the coaches also feel the love, so it brings the players and coaches closer together as a unit. Absolutely. You know, we definitely wish the best to Coach, Co Coach Cameron, and we know that he's definitely ready for the 2015 season. But coming up after our first break, we'll talk about our conference, the SEC. Is the SEC really dead? I don't know, but that and much more on the Tiger TV Game Day Show. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Tiger TV Game Day Show. Now, before we get back to our show, we just saw Mike the Tiger Ow. being rolled down Victory Hill. So it looks like after making no appearances last season, he's gonna make Mike it. the Tiger has made it. He will be on the field this evening against McNeese State to scare the Cowboys a little Absolutely. bit. Absolutely. He'll be parked outside the McNeese locker room as he usually is when the opponent <laughs> comes to town. The cheerleaders will be up on top, and when they come out, Mike will give a big, loud roar. And opponents have said they're going to stop when Mike roars. So definitely a little extra advantage for the Tigers. This awesome. is a great sign for the start of the season. I'm just saying that. Great it's time. an omen, a positive omen. But fellas, <laughs> to get back to where we were a year ago, at Tiger TV was in Houston with excellent coverage of LSU's win over Wisconsin. And then we came back to Tiger Stadium and LSU couldn't quite get things going after a hard loss to Mississippi State. The Tigers were virtually eliminated from the SEC West race after their loss to Alabama in overtime in Death Valley. And from then on, lost two of their last three games to finish 8-5 and five after the bowl loss. Alabama went on to beat Missouri in the SEC championship game to advance as the number one seed in the inaugural college football playoff and Ohio State upsetting Alabama and then beating Oregon in the national championship game to give the Big Ten the national title back. So guys, what's one thing that sticks out for y'all locally with this LSU team and then nationally in the broader scope of college football? Well, guys, locally with LSU, first of all, this team was learning last year. A lot of young guys, a lot of young talent that's going to come back this year having played through that tough season. Nationally, that stood out to me was the parity that there was in college football. You have a Big Ten team win the national title. You have Ole Miss and Mississippi State compete in the SEC West. But to be honest, they haven't competed since the 1970s. So college football has changed. And every, there's a lot more parity in the past. So I think that's the big storyline. And this is a big storyline we're talking about going into this season. I think in college football is changing. And it, I think it's great for college football yeah. you know, that the SEC you know, may be down some year. That's good for college football. But I think locally and nationally, the biggest thing that stuck out to me is coaching changes. Here in Baton Rouge, we get Ed Ogeron on the defensive line, Kevin Steele is the defensive coordinator, yeah. and coaching changes nationally. Will Mustram going to Auburn, Jim Hallbar in Michigan, a lot of I'm very interesting to watch them throughout the season, how they do. Now, turning our focus to this season, a lot of talk about the SEC being down, as you mentioned, Taylor, and that conference like the Big Ten and Pac-12 were surging. But the SEC is still the SEC. The West is, once again, the most loaded division in college football with experts saying that the teams could finish 1 through 7 in any order this season with predictions. So let's take a look at how our Tiger TV staff Pick the West for this oh, yeah. season. We're going to have a nice full screen graphic for you. Look, I got LSU winning. I have AM second. A lot of people not having Texas AM that high. I'm high on the Aggies this year to really maybe surprise some people. But as, we, as I said earlier, it could go one through seven anyway, Taylor. You can tell by looking at this that most students go to LSU yeah. as uh, they finish the top spot. You're right. It can go one and seven. These are predictions. No one knows how the SEC finishes any year. No, absolutely not. Nobody last year at this time was talking Mississippi State and Ole Miss. I'm not high on Alabama this year. I feel that they're too young on both sides of the ball. They haven't yet settled on a quarterback. I personally take Wisconsin to keep it close. Bama's got some tough road games this year, so I'm saying the Tide doesn't do as consistently well as in the past. I know they're a Nick Saban team, but 
they got to have an off year somewhere. I agree with you. I think it'll be yeah. an orthodox year for Alabama, and Arkansas, I think, will have a good year. Absolutely. In that in-state rivalry, I think Auburn will definitely dominate the Iron Bowl. Playing in Auburn as well, you know, last time they had to pick six, you know they're going to be playing that highlight over and over and over again. So it's definitely going to be, I'm taking the Tigers to be the more dominant one in the West. But, you know, you're looking nationally, Ohio State wins the national title. With a, everyone says the, the thing about Ohio State, the beef is their weak schedule in the Big Ten. The Big Ten, obviously, not a lot of great teams, but Harbaugh and Michigan coming back. Michigan State is looking good. And obviously, Urban Meyer at Ohio State has basically built an SEC team in the North. So what kind of what do you expect from Ohio State this year? Is there any game that you see them possibly losing? Well, they play Michigan State, correct? That that could be yeah, one of the at home games later in the year. Michigan State is just a good a sleeper, problem. I want to take y'all back to 1969. Ohio State is number one in the country. And Sports Illustrated says the only game worth watching in America is Ohio State's first team versus their second team in Columbus. They go into Ann Arbor, Michigan, and get beat by first-year head coach Bo Schembechler. Ohio State's number one. If they win wire to wire, they're going into Ann Arbor with a first-year head coach. I'm saying, could history repeat itself? I don't know. I'm looking for Michigan to maybe possibly that'll get be the a upset. Fun, that'll be a fun game to watch. Absolutely. Sure. And we see now the LSU Golden Band from Tigerland coming down the hill. There 325 members strong. They've, of course, been marching down the hill every year since the 1930s. Now, of course, the first four notes has been played every year since 1967, the iconic bump, 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 bump. <laughs> but touchdown for LSU is a little bit older. It was written in 1932 by Governor Huey Long and band leader Castro Cazaro. The governor. The governor, Huey Long, quite an iconic figure in Louisiana politics, actually wrote the iconic song that we hear every day for pregame. Mm -hmm. So Huey's with us every every game, even though we don't really know it. Before we uh, wait for the band to play their song, um, do y'all have a sleeper in the SEC this year that could maybe bump out and surprise some people? I'm taking the Hogs. Yeah, I, I, agree. I think Hogs. they will be competitive in the West. I think it's going to be a close game here in Death Valley. I think if it was an away game, I would be nervous, but I think the home game, I'll give the advantage to LSU. So definitely Arkansas. Yeah, I'd, I'd say there. Arkansas, and I don't know how much of a sleeper they are based on how they play the last few weeks of the last season. But yeah, I think Arkansas is a sleeper. All right, as we're waiting for the band to play their song, and here we go. We hear here we the go. And the crowd uh, roars. Let's toss it over to the Golden Band from Tigerland on Victory Hill. <laughs> Mitch showing us all the. Uh... Tiger TV Game Day Show, Johnny Lombardi here with a man who needs no introduction, former LSU baseball coach from 1984 to 2001, five-time national champion, and former LSU athletic director, a name that's synonymous with LSU athletics, Coach Skip Burtman. Coach, how you doing? Good, nice to see you. Thanks for coming on with us, and um, it was, I think, two, a couple years ago when we were here with yeah. you previously, and it's amazing in that short of a time, which feels like short of a time, so many changes in the LSU athletics game. Yes. All these teams. Um, in the 2014-15 season, you know, the football team had a solid year, but then volleyball comes out, makes the NCAA tournament, basketball team with Johnny Jones goes to the tournament, um, LSU Gymnastics has a record-breaking year, the softball team goes to the Women's College World Series, and baseball returns to Omaha. Just talk about how, you know, the LSU athletic community is just thriving across the board today. Well, uh, you, you got to give Joe Oliva a lot of credit, you know, in heading the athletic department. But most of all, you have to give the fact that we have older coaches. Mm -hmm. Like Les Miles going his 13th year, and of course Johnny Jones is from here. The chances are that Johnny Jones will finish his career here. There's no question that Paul Maneri will finish his career here, that Les Miles will finish his career here. Um, people like D.D. D. Bro or Karen Bonson, you know, been here over 30 years in their sports. Uh, we have others like that, and Fran Flory and others that are been here a long time, and I think that's the stability mm -hmm. uh, and continual quest for perfection that you see in all sports, and the facilities are getting better and better and better. For this year's 2015 LSU football team, there's you know, they're smack dab in the SEC West. People are saying this team could be a 
Final Four playoff team. They're saying this team could go seven and five. They're saying it all depends on the quarterback. There's tons of different storylines. You know, Les Miles in his, I believe, 11th or 12th year here at LSU. Uh, what are some of your expectations for this football season and with the, the squad that we have well, going on? I, I am a big, uh, uh, I watch them very carefully. Uh, you know, I sit up uh, and watch them upstairs. But I think they have an, uh, a very good offensive line. I think that Leonard Fournette is just probably one of the better backs in the United States. And assuming, and here's the thing, you gotta, you can't have an injury to any of the linemen, the five interior linemen, or the fullback, see, that blocks for Leonard, or Fournette, of course, himself. Although there are other good players, of course. But Fournette is uh, potentially all-world and uh, could do a lot of great things. And, and uh, I think they'll do very, very well. I think I have a lot of confidence in the coaches in both offensive coordinating, defensive coordinating, and all of the coaches. And, of course, the athletes, they work it right. Tommy Moffitt gets them strong and healthy and ready. Uh, we, we're not going to be out coached. You, you may get beat by uh, an official's flag that does or doesn't go your way. You know, I mean, it isn't that they're wrong. It's close, and they just don't call it. Okay, uh, vice versa. Okay, and they do call it, but it, uh, it that can happen. It can also you can fumble. You know, you can you can uh, miss a tackle, or you can not have your best performance with the thirty or forty guys that are doing most of the playing, and the other thirty or forty are just spectacular that night, particularly uh, quarterback and or a running back and that night you lose. So Paul Maneri has a great team and he runs into a hot pitcher, but next week when the pitcher pitches, he's not so hot, you know? Well, that can happen in football too, but it's hard to see as much in football. Last question, um, you know, you hired him. He's been here for 11, 12 years, less miles. What do you think, you know, being the guy who hired him, being the former athletic director, figure in the community, watching less miles coach this team, what does he mean to LSU, and what is his true impact at the university? Uh, Les took the heat. Everybody said he wasn't Nick Saban. And then in a few years, he had a better record than Nick Saban had. And then in a few more years, he won another national championship. And we're still not forgiving the guy, you know, for the, and, and the hurricane made such a difference. But Les gave up himself gave up some of the football say to help these people uh let's make the players go over there and uh, uh it was more than the football team to him it was uh thousands and thousands of people uh, that needed help welcome back to the tiger tv tailgate show Tons of thanks to Skip Burtman for letting us into his home to do that interview. An awesome interview. If you want to see that full Skip Burtman interview, go to TigerTV.tv. The full interview is there. We talked about LSU sports and Hurricane Katrina and Skip's ex experience with that storm. So go to TigerTV.tv TV for the full Skip Burtman interview. But earlier today, Tiger TV's own Brandon Hilliard went around the tailgating scene to see what Tiger fans are up to on opening day when it comes to tailgating. We've been at this spot since... Uh an older friend of mine had this spot since 87, and he moved, and we took it over in 91, 92, and we've been here ever since, never moved. Uh, we've been tailgating around here about seven or eight years now. It's a group from Alexandria, Louisiana, actually. The best part about tailgating at LSU are the friends you see every year, the brotherhood, everybody you see. It's like a party seven or eight times a year. You know, you see everybody you know, and you might not see otherwise. And just the camaraderie and the fun, you know, it's like a it's like a party eight times a year. It's an excuse and it's fun. It's great, man. The atmosphere, the people, it's really the best fans in the whole country, man. It's awesome. It feels great this year. Um, you know, you don't see everybody from last November, and now everybody's here again, and everybody's so excited for the first game. It's good. Uh, I actually graduated three years ago, and. Uh, I've you know, been coming back ever since, man. LSU, just love it. Live and die. All right, guys. Now, before we get to the action tonight in Death Valley, LSU versus McNeese State, 
2015 season opener. Yeah. Opener. I need to know your keys to the game tonight for the LSU Tigers and a score prediction. Taylor, we'll go to you first. Uh, show up. No, I think <laughs> the keys of the game is for LSU. I really want to see what they do with Brandon Harris. I think a game like McNeese State is the time to experiment a little bit offensively, yeah. open up the playbook. Let's see what this guy's got in his first, no, no, his second start, I should say. Mitch, how about you? Absolutely. LSU, first off, has to keep the um, uh, the offense moving. The lineman got a block. Let Leonard Fournette get out there. Let him get some separation. Brandon Harris has got to get the ball to these receivers and move it downfield, and I think they will. But, guys, do you know McNeese State's record opening up against Division One opponents? Two and three. Two and three. They Ooh, only good, lost. Good guess there, Taylor. <laughs> they only lost last year at Nebraska when Amir Abdullah had that great run. I got the blue on today, guys. Uh -oh. But give me that nice. head. Uh -oh. I'm going with the Tigers, 56 to 14. 56 to 14. 14. That's gonna, a huge. What's I'm your gonna score? I'm going to say 30, 34-10. Uh, Tigers, yeah. 56 to 14. 34-10. I think, I think, yeah, 34 LSU. Okay. okay. LSU. I'm going to go 45-10 Tigers. I think LSU is going to be too much for McNeese State. Um, I'm really excited to see, as you said, Taylor, Brandon Harris and how the Tigers open up the playbook for him, just for him to manage the game, get some reps going into Mississippi State next week yeah. and Auburn the week after that. So it it's gonna tougher. be it's gonna be a great game, guys. College Absolutely. football is finally back We're in back. Baton Rouge. Mitch Rabelais with the Tiger Head, awesome. <laughs> Y'all, thank you so much for joining us today for, for the Tiger TV Tailgate Show. Before we go, we want to give a quick plug to our friends across the hall, the Daily Reveille with their first ever Reveille Game Day edition. You can pick these up across campus on your way to the stadium. If you're watching this broadcast and heading to the game, make sure to pick up a Reveille game day on your way into the stadium. Make sure to check out all of our content here at Tiger TV at tigertv.tv and lsureveille.com. Follow us on Twitter at TTV underscore sports and on Instagram at TTV underscore sports. Make sure to check us out tonight and tomorrow. We'll have tons of content from tonight's game against McNeese State. For Taylor Curette, and Mitch Rabelais, I'm Johnny Lombardi. Thank you to the Manship School for hosting once again. We'll see you in two weeks, Tiger fans.